Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to be filming one of my first reaction videos and I'm going to be reacting to one of my most popular videos that a lot of you guys found me through and that is the labor and delivery of my son almost four years ago. It was a popular video because I did things a little bit differently. I ended up driving myself to the hospital while in active labor and having him completely on my own. No friends, no family. Um, I was going through a divorce at the point in time and my ex slash current husband at the time lived in Texas, so he was not able to come to the birth. So this is going to be the behind the scenes of all of my thoughts and feelings around this day, and hopefully you guys enjoy seeing this. I will say it's probably going to be a two-part video because this video itself is 14 minutes, and with my commentary, it's probably going to be closer to 30. So I'm going to just break it up into two parts for you guys. Hopefully you enjoy. If you'd like to watch this video without me talking over it, if you haven't seen it before, it will be linked in the description box down below, but let's get started. Everyone, good morning. I am, don't have a voice yet because it's actually only 3.25 in the morning on October 16th, but I woke up with contractions about like 2.50 something. They've been coming every five minutes. And I know you're supposed to wait an hour until I'm already pausing just to say that I had already had a baby before this, as you guys know. Um, I was super anxious about when I would eventually go into labor because she was such a quick labor and delivery for a first baby. I had my first contraction at 7 p.m. when I had her, and then they were immediately two minutes apart, and I had her at the hospital at 2 a.m. I do mention in this video, I believe, that this was a 30-minute drive away from my hospital, so even though I wasn't having real contractions at this point, I just kind of woke up feeling gross and uncomfortable. Uh, I was really worried that I wasn't going to get to the hospital in time. So even if this was going to be a false alarm, I still wanted to film this for you guys and just kind of like have the birth and labor delivery vlog. You go to the hospital, you're supposed to do every five minutes, lasting a minute for an hour, and then you can go. But my hospital is 30 minutes away, everyone's sleeping, I'm just going to drive myself to the hospital. This is also something I wanted to talk about. Why did I drive myself to the hospital? Like I said, when it started off, I just felt kind of like crampy, a little bit nauseous, uncomfortable. I couldn't sleep after like 3 a.m. And so I just wanted to go get checked out. I kind of thought that they might send me home. So my family was all sleeping. My parents were both there. My daughter was sleeping in the other room. And so I left them a note on the kitchen counter. I ended up calling my dad later when I got to the hospital. I don't even think he picked up because it was so early and I think his phone was on silent. So I didn't want to wake everyone up for potentially a false alarm. And also, I don't have the kind of relationship with my parents where I would want them to watch me have a baby and things at the hospital are very invasive, like with the cervical checks and all of that stuff. And I just, if I had to do it by myself, I was gonna do it by myself. So that was kind of my thought process. The baby's dad, like I said, lived in Texas. So there was no chance of him being there on time to watch me have the baby. And that was something we knew ahead of time that he would just take paternity leave after I had the baby. So I kind of knew I was gonna maybe be in this position, but I wasn't fully sure I was gonna drive myself to the hospital in active labor. Because everything is pretty manageable right now. And I just, I wanna go get this checked out because I'm 40 weeks pregnant on Sunday and I actually just had my 39 week appointment yesterday and they were talking about inducing me next week. The original plan that I had discussed with my ex-husband slash husband at the time was if I got induced, then he was going to be there for the birth because then that would be a scheduled appointment where he was going to arrive. But since labor started naturally, like a couple days before that, uh, he didn't end up being there. So I figure if I show up and this isn't real labor, which it feels like it is. It was. It might just induce me anyway. So I'm just gonna go have a baby, maybe. Possible last bump shot. This is me stalling. Ever. Okay, so I guess this is us at possibly three weeks. All right, everyone, I did it. I made it to the hospital. I am parked in patient visitor parking, I think, because I couldn't figure out where you park when you drive yourself to the hospital like a crazy person, but no. I keep referring to myself as a crazy person because I truly felt so... I already was feeling a little bit embarrassed about being by myself. Like, I didn't know how this hospital staff was going to treat me. I didn't know, like, what was going to happen, really. I was so anxious about this delivery because of my first labor and delivery that I had with my daughter 
it ended up being like traumatic to say the least. She ended up in the NICU, she was having seizures and all of that stuff. And like I said, her labor was very quick. So I was really nervous. I ran out the door without a coat and this was October in Chicago. I think I mentioned it later in this clip because I think I'm like sitting in the car stalling that it was very cold. I'm not sure the exact temperature if I say it, hopefully I do. I didn't grab my winter coat, I grabbed my hospital bag, his car seat, and then ended up pulling my bathrobe out of my hospital bag and wearing that as a winter coat, and it didn't work very well. I was freezing. Very because I was pretty much the only car on the road, and if I had needed to, which I didn't, I could have pulled over on the expressway and parked my car, and nobody would have hit me. So, very great driving conditions for someone who's in labor and shouldn't be driving themselves to the hospital, but... We're here. I'm just going to hang out here for a minute or two while I wasn't entirely sure I was in labor. That's why I'm kind of stalling. I didn't want to inconvenience any of the doctors or nurses at the hospital. I'm just weird like that. I just, I don't like the attention on me in that way. That's another reason why I don't have anything, anyone with me. I know that when I'm in a painful situation, I don't really like to be coddled or cuddled or like comforted. And so I was like, I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna get this over with. That was my whole attitude towards this labor and delivery. So I'm just in the car stalling at this point because I was afraid that they were going to be like, you're not in labor and send me home. And I was gonna feel really embarrassed when I got back. Contract. I don't want to go in there and tell them that my contractions haven't actually been that long or anything because I don't want them to be like, well, why did you come here? I felt because so I awkward. I drove myself like a crazy person. But anyway, so I'm going to sit here. The one thing that I did forget when I was running out the door was a coat. I did mention that. And it that. is 46 degrees right now and I'm wearing a t-shirt. And I had just so moved from Texas, so this was to freezing there. to me. So, okay. Um, I'll let you guys know when I go in. Alright, I guess I'm in triage. I'm about to put on a gown. So this is what I'm going to be wearing while I'm here. It's so funny this that I'm filming this. In with. And I'm also going to pee in a cup. It's actually so funny to me seeing myself like filming all of these extra clips because I was so dedicated to this labor and delivery vlog. I wanted to document the whole thing. It had been my dream since like finding out I was pregnant. I was doing the weekly pregnancy updates and everyone who does YouTube like looks forward to their labor and delivery vlog. What I didn't know is how hard it is to vlog when you are in active labor. Uh, I think I tell you guys in a minute that I was like five centimeters dilated. Um, so I was in a decent amount of pain. I do have a very high pain tolerance, but like filming yourself in active labor when your contractions get to like two minutes apart, very hard. I just got my cervix checked for the first time. Ouch. Well, in this pregnancy. And I'm five centimeters dilated already, so this is gonna go really quick. Welcome to my hospital room. It actually has a really amazing view, but these windows are like really big and I don't want anyone seeing what's about to happen in here. There's a bathroom over there. It's actually a really big room. This is way bigger than the last time I did this. Okay, I'm contracting. Where do we leave off? Um, I've been admitted. I am sitting I miss in those bed glasses. looking like this. Um, I feel like they kind of forgot about me, to be honest. That's something I wanted to talk about in this video. I was there by myself and didn't have, like, a partner with me or anything like that, and the nurses truly did not know what to do with me. I was actually very almost ashamed slash embarrassed when they would ask about like, why isn't your partner here? Because I was going through a separation but wasn't divorced yet. Um, my ex slash it was husband at the time was in the army. So I believe I told them that like because of the army, like, I don't know, I let them kind of assume that he was deployed, that he wouldn't be there because I just wanted them to stop asking about it. I felt so awkward every time they would be like, so is someone coming to be with you? And I was like, no. And so they didn't know what to do with me. They just kept, they would check me, ask if I needed anything and then leave the room. And it was weird because I was the only person on the hospital floor. So it's not like they were rushing off to help other people. And so I felt like they would just kind of forget about me. And I'd be like, is someone coming in 
to check on me anytime soon. Like, I'm in active labor, and I haven't talked to anyone in a really long time. I was also very alone at this point in time because it was still super early in the morning, and none of my friends and family were awake. I couldn't get a hold of Nick. I think I mentioned that a couple times in this video that I had, like, tried calling him and texting him to tell him, like, hey, your son's about to be born, and I had not heard of heard from him. So this was just like a very lonely period of time. I was just kind of sitting there like this is really happening, like trying to soak it in. And above all else, I was just very lonely. Well, I think I'm the only person here. They said they I had was. one woman arrive earlier by ambulance in a ton of pain and it turns out she wasn't even in labor. And they said, look at you, you drove yourself and you're five centimeters dilated. So I'm not bragging, but apparently that makes me weird. All right, so they got the IV in. My hair was got so long. Twice. Normally they can only get it in right here, but they got it in my hand, so I'm super happy about that. I'm contracting every two minutes, so I really hope they get that blood work sent off so I can get that epidural ASAP because this does not feel good. No. It is 6 a.m. and they just wheeled in this. This was funny to me because they wheeled in the epidural cart and let it just sit at the end of my bed. They couldn't get a hold of the anesthesiologist and so I just sat there in excruciating pain, like five or six centimeters dilated at this point, just staring at the cart that was going to bring me less pain and there was no sign of this anesthesiologist. So I just sat there looking at it. I think I snapchatted it a few times. I posted on Instagram and I was like, hey, the cart's here, but no one's helping me. I mean, I wasn't really complaining. I was just kind of sitting there and waiting it out. And just when you're alone in the hospital and you don't have anyone to talk to or distract you, I really just could only focus on the pain that I was in. So this was really taunting. Beautiful cart. This is the epidural and spinal cart. Thank the Lord, because I am not having any fun. It's been about 45 minutes since they wheeled in the epidural cart, and it's been taunting me. <laughs> I have the hiccups. <laughs> it's been taunting me. They've been paging the anesthesiologist, and they can't get a hold of him. And my contractions I was very like frustrated with him. Super, super I remember... I up. I'm ruining this. I will go back to the spot we were at. But I remember... When the anesthesiologist did finally come in, he kind of like barely acknowledged me. Like he basically told me like, okay, lean over the bed. This is what's gonna happen. But then kind of just talked to the nurse in front of me. They were like discussing, I think like his daughter's wedding or something. So I felt very like out of place in this hospital. Otherwise, like, great experience. The nurses were really great when I needed them, like, truly needed them. But yeah, I remember him chatting with, I think it was his daughter's bat mitzvah, actually. I don't know, but they were having a whole ass conversation over me, having contractions, and then getting a needle in my spine. So I just felt very out of place, and I just remember that was funny. And my contractions are, like, super, super close together. I don't know if you can even see this. They hurt a lot. I think I'm having one right now. I had to put the camera down. Like I said, filming your own labor and delivery, very, very tricky. All right, everyone, updating has been tricky, but it is now a little bit that. after 8 a.m. I got here at like 4 a.m.-ish. I think I left my house at like 3.30. I am six centimeters dilated. I just got my epidural. I'm laying on my left side right now because it was only working on the right side. It only really I ever worked on amazing. one side. They just dropped off a soft foods tray. I have actually never seen this in a labor and delivery video. So one other thing about being in the hospital by yourself and having the epidural and being numb from the waist down is you really can't do anything for yourself. I think at one point, like I dropped my phone or my phone charger fell between like the crack in the bed and I couldn't reach over myself to get any of the drinks off the tray. So I had to like very nicely page the nurses and be like, hey, can you help me? I, I dropped this. Can you get me a, a tissue out of my bag? Can you do this or that for me? Um, which when you have a support person in the room, you have someone who can do all of those little things for you. But I remember I was starving I think I mentioned in this video that I had gone to bed without eating dinner, maybe? I don't know, because I obviously didn't know I was going to go into labor. So I was so hungry, I was so thirsty, and this food tray being like a foot out of my reach was a huge 
disappointment. This is like super watery mashed potatoes. This is a cup of coffee. That's that was milk, nice. orange juice. Coffee There's and labor was amazing. What I thought was pudding, but was actually vanilla yogurt. And I think that's it, right? So I might go ahead and make myself some coffee, although I can't really feel my legs, so yeah, sitting I up is not really an reach option. The cups. But yeah, they checked me six centimeters dilated. They said things are still looking thick, but the baby's head is like basically there, so we're just gonna wait for the rest of the dilation, I guess. And I'm gonna drink some stuff and lay here. Still haven't gotten a hold of Nick, who I texted several times, but hopefully, if he's not at work or something, he wakes up soon. Uh I don't want to talk too much about this because now we have a very healthy, civil co-parenting relationship, so I don't want to be like, you were such an asshole four years ago. But yeah, I couldn't get a hold of him, and then I think when I finally did, he kind of just texted me back like, so, just, like, let me know what's happening. And I was like, oh, kind of thought maybe you wanted to FaceTime or something, and he, like, didn't. So, um, which is probably because he was... I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> I'm probably not even going to go there. Civil co-parenting relationship. I think I just dropped my phone. Yeah, I, I might have to call someone to get that. I guess we're just waiting. I'm definitely having a contraction right now, but it doesn't hurt, which is a really weird sensation. Maybe it does kind of hurt. I started to get back labor, which I didn't have with Stella um, because her epidural fully worked on me, but this one only worked on half of my body. I remember it feeling like I had a Charlie horse in my spine, if you know that kind of foot cramp that you get, and I was in so much pain up until like he came out of my body at this point. So the epidural numbed parts of my body and then kind of accentuated the pain in other parts. So I was truly miserable here. You just can't tell because I just have a very good pain tolerance. That's not cool. Update, not really a health update, but I, I found out that the applesauce is actually chocolate pudding. So I'm pretty excited about that because I'm actually starving because last night I went to bed at like, I don't know, like nine o'clock and I was contemplating eating something, oh. but I was like, yeah, it's too late to eat. And I didn't realize I was gonna go into labor and I wouldn't be able to eat. So I'm kind of starving. The last thing I'm gonna say before I go to part two is one of the major perks about having a support system with you when you have a baby is a lot of women really look forward to their first meal after pushing out the baby. You use a lot of energy and there's a lot of foods that you can't eat throughout pregnancy. Like a lot of women avoid sur sushi, avoid surgery, avoid sushi. And so like their partner will bring them a sushi platter or their favorite fast food or a cold cut sandwich like after you push out the baby. And I didn't have anyone to do that. And so I remember when I finally had Fievel, it was right after the lunch menus were taken. So they kind of just brought me whatever food from the cafeteria that was left over, which happened to be like hospital meatloaf, which I just remember it tasted incredible because I was so hungry at that point, I would have eaten anything. But that is the last thing I have to say in this video. I will see you guys in part two, probably within the next few days, because I got to edit this and get it up for you guys. So I'll see you in the next one.